to TN Sports Chat presented by Lehigh Valley Health Network. I'm Patrick Maxinko. This is Emmett McCall. Um, we are officially into summer mode. Um, wrapped up our spring sports season last week, but now that we are officially done with our spring sports season, we are into our recognizing our players of the year for yeah. the season. If you've been looking at the Times News this week, we started on Monday and uh, through Friday of this week, we will have the player of the year for each of our five spring sports. Started with um, boys track and field, which was Lee Heighton's Tamir Spencer, um, phenomenal season, medaled at States, um, two-time district champion in the 100 and the 200, he medaled in the 200. Um, and then our boys tennis player was Josh Schaffner of Pleasant Valley. Um, and then we did our girls, which was Marion's Tina Caporell. Um, and now this is Thursday and it's Northern Lehigh's Caitlin Hoffman. So, um, so that's what we're, that's what we've hit so far. Two underclassmen, two seniors. So, um, both Spencer and Schaffner will, back, will be back next year. Caporell, who's won four. Yeah. Cross, country. uh, cross countries and now a fifth with uh, with track this year. She's won five times News Player of the Year awards. Um, she's a senior heading to the University of Delaware, uh, Division One runner, and Caitlin Hoffman, who's a three times Times yeah. News Softball Player of the Year award winner, and she's heading to Division One too, I believe Fairfield I believe for softball. So, yes. so um, both of those are Division One athletes. So. Um, Friday's paper is yet to come. That will be the our final last, one, our last the spring final reveal. review. That will be our uh, baseball athlete of the year is coming in tomorrow's Times News. And thinking about um, Caitlin Hoffman, Tina Caporell winning multiple Players of the Year awards. Um, I mean, Tina Caporell, like you said, she's a four-time cross-country um, Player of the Year, Athlete of the Year. Uh, we have a lot of kids that, I guess that kind of got us thinking about some of the kids that we have that are great multi-sport, that have been great multi-sport athletes um, across maybe all three seasons, maybe just maybe just two seasons, but um, we kind of ran down a list of about 12 kids, um, each from one of our um, schools in our coverage area, uh, six boys, six girls. And um, all 10 schools represented. Yeah. And we had talked about, you know, a couple of weeks ago with sports slowing down now that uh, part of the summer we're going to do some lists and, you know, best of and things like that. And this is our first one we're going to talk about. We thought it yeah. tied in really nicely to the players of the year. We've got a list of. 12 people, like you said, and uh, we'll talk about these 12 athletes. If if we were doing an overall athlete of the year, these would be the yeah. people under consideration, we thought. Um, and, you know, and we used to do that about 20 years <laughs> ago, 30 years ago, when I started here at the Times News. We, we didn't do the sport by sport um, athlete of the year. We just did at the end, we did one comprehensive athlete of the year. And I think it's an interesting concept. I mean, you look around and you see different outlets kind of doing stuff in, in a similar fashion. Um, you know, just to kind of think off the top, you look at uh, Atina Caporell, who was a state champion in cross country. Like you said, four time um, cross country athlete of the year. This season was just as good. I mean, in, in track and field, I mean, right. winning, you know, throughout the season into leagues and districts and then getting two medals at states. Um, you know, yeah. in her two sports, she was, she was extremely dominant. Yes. Yeah. And um, like I just said earlier, she's a Division One athlete. We kind of picked her as our Marion athlete of yeah. the year, all around athlete of the year. And uh, Tina's uh, obviously, you know, earned it. In, in addition to um, what we, we talked about the cross country and the spring track season, um, she had a really good winter indoor oh, track yeah, season meddling, too. I saw a yeah. story about her. So she actually ran year round. And coming off of an injury too. Right, that ran she through an injury. ran through that to get to a state title in cross country. Um, so again, just phenomenal um, all the way around, you know, in, um, in pretty much every facet. Um, and then you look at, uh, Weatherly's Emily Zoshin, um, all-state basketball player, um, solid, very good volleyball player, and now a two-time state qualifier in track and field. Yeah. 
Yeah, obviously, you know, like you said, did three sports, did them all really well. Probably their best volleyball player. Yeah. Definitely their best basketball player. And probably, well, they don't really even have an official track team. No, they don't There's even have a track. Or five kids running <laughs> that go compete with other high schools to kind of put up times and distances. Yeah. And, uh, so without a track, I remember the story we did on her last year when she qualified for state. She'd never come out of On a dirt road. road. And, yeah, yeah. Running on grass. And yeah, so, uh, so she's our weatherly pick uh, as Beth athlete. She's only a sophomore, right? Just finished her junior. junior year. Just finished her junior year. So she's got another year coming back. Which is back. still, I mean, yeah, more to more to accomplish. Two-time All-State basketball player. Um, two times all state qualifier and yeah. track it. I mean, yeah. So you just think about all those different things. And um, like you said, she has another year still, which is going to be exciting uh, for sure. And that's a team too in girls basketball that won district championship. So um, yeah. And so there are, there are two of the Schuylkill League schools. Let's go to another one. Let's do, uh, let's do uh, Panther Valley now. Uh, we'll get a, a boys wrap in from Panther Valley. We thought Who, Tristan Blasco. I think, and the, again, yeah, yeah, all around. Um, you Another know, three sport. Yeah, uh, football, basketball, baseball. Um, you know, I think certainly you could, you would say a, a leader for all three of those teams for head coach Scott Price, Pat Cramsey, um, Richie Vanko. You know, all three of those coaches, all three of those programs. Tristan was. Um, you know, I think at the forefront leading. Yeah, you, know, you can make a case that he was either the best or the second best player on all three. A of thousand those point teams. score in basketball. Uh, division two. He, he's got Division two scholarship to Bloomsburg in football, and um, and then had a great baseball season uh, as a, I think the Panthers cleanup hitter, third hitter in the lineup. Power. He, he was definitely the oh, power yeah, he was Oh, absolutely. So yeah, three sports, excelled on all of them um, and um, helped the, the basketball and baseball teams both uh, the, the basketball team qualified for the state playoffs for the first time in 20 some years, about 27 years, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, baseball team made the district playoffs this year. Got a win. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, not only did he have individual success, but he helped two of the three teams to uh, postseason success as well. Um, and to kind of keep it, um, you know, sort of in that vein, let's think about uh, a Justin St. Hill from Jim Thorpe. Um, certainly, a spark plug for the football team. I mean, I know it wasn't, he didn't always want to maybe have it considered being a wildcat sort of position, but he was a running back, but he would also take direct snaps. Right. And I mean, I mean, he did so much, um, you know, for that team. And another um, great athlete who helped the, the team be great. Yeah. Tim Thorpe uh, made district playoffs, uh, nine and one regular season, only losing Millie Hyden. Won a district playoff game before losing to Lee Hayden again, yeah. and getting knocked out um, in the second round of the the district playoffs. So, um, and like you said, he he was a, a the most valuable offensive player on the team, and probably one of the top three athletes we were considering for a football player of the oh, year. Oh, no the doubt. Times News. Yeah. Um, again, one of the best players on one of the best teams, you know, maybe the best player on one of the best teams again. Um, and then you look at track and field, district champion, 3A yeah. in the triple jump, goes to states um, and, ball and ball, helped yeah. a team that had a really great season. Frank Miller, um, you know, that Jim Thorpe boys team was... Fourth, four straight. League champ, Schuylkill League championships so, for the boys. I mean, that's a team that, uh, you know, whether it was through or on a relay, you know, in other different events where he was scoring points, um, he was phenomenal for the track team. Um, he did he did a lot there for them. So um, you look at what his success meant to both of those teams, and, um, right. and it was really apparent in the results. Yes. So... Um, no, we'll let's go to the next. Uh, let's we'll keep it Schuylkill League again. Now the the uh, next two Schuylkill League teams we had. These are the only two teams we had where we uh, picked two athletes. We picked a, a male and a female athlete from each of these schools. We thought they were both deserving. We'll start with Tamaqua. Um, we had Thad Zuber and Emma Kuczynski. Emma Kuczynski, right? Um, which. Again, you think about you know just being able to. Um, I didn't get a chance to cover Tamaqua football, um, but uh, I did get to see Thad play a little bit of basketball, and I got to see him play a little bit of baseball. But again, you just look at what he was able to do across all three sports: football, basketball, baseball, um, and you look at the success that all 
all three of the teams, teams had. had. And how versatile he was in all in all three oh, sports, yeah. too. He, I mean, basketball, he was a thousand point scorer, yeah. also a great rebounder for them. Football, he played multiple positions. He quarterbacked, he was receiver, you know, he, he was a defensive uh, star. So, I mean, you know, just did a little bit of everything there. And then in baseball, great, great. Oh, for a team of, that was, again, on the, you know, on, on the cusp of, you know, playing for a district championship, um, had great season. Um, made state playoffs in basketball. Yeah. This, this past season. Um, I mean, again, you know, and you look at, too, what he does off the court and off the field. I mean, he's a, he's a re remarkable student. I yeah, mean, we had his at, bio win when he was, um, he signed, uh, where's he going, Division, he's going Division Three. I, I remember just seeing his his uh, signing story in the paper, and it was like three times the length it, of yeah. the normal ones because and he was involved in everything and, you know, just kind of did it all. And you think about being a well-rounded student athlete, you know, yes. those two words, um, I don't know that we have anybody who fits that bill quite like um, quite like he does. You know, he does, he really does do, do it all. Um, and then you think about Emma Kuczynski, who was a phenomenal soccer player. Um, I mean, one of, um, you know, I think Soccer's one of Clem McCarroll's, yeah, yeah, one of Clem McCarroll's, um, you know, best. And then you think about what she does during during the basketball season, um, you yeah. know, for, for head coach Erica Davis, you know, and then again, it's she's she's kind of the focal point of both of those teams. Yeah, uh, a leading scorer on both those teams, uh, only a sophomore. Yeah. So uh, you know, she's got two more years of high school sports to to build on that. But uh, Tamaqua basketball team made the district playoffs this year. Yeah. Um, like I said, knocked off Northwestern too. Yeah. Yeah. Which, a good, and a good Northwestern game central. A yeah. Huge scare. Oh, that was a game down to the wire. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and you look at the record this year, I think it was regular season record 12 and 10, something like that, which is a bit misleading because you're playing in Division One of the Schuylkill League, which oh, was yeah. loaded this year. It's loaded pretty much every, every year, year the yeah. Schuylkill League. But, you know, it was loaded this year. So they kind of went into the uh, playoffs under the radar a little bit because you looked at them and the record didn't pop. But but we knew they were good. They, oh, we knew they playing were talented. Teams. Absolutely. And, uh, and they showed it there. So, um, you know. Um, Emma had a great season and has a couple more years to, like I said, build on that. And you think about, again, you know, facing tough competition, kind of being the focal point. You look at Pleasant Valley's Masani Francis um, in basketball. Um, she was huge um, for Nadia Goronsky in that basketball team. And then in the fall, she was also our female um, tennis player of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and she's been kind of, again, she's kind of, um, Mark Allison and that tennis team, she's, uh, she's really been a, a key cog for him um, and for a team that's, that's had pretty good success too, yeah. qualifying for districts like they did again this past fall and playing right. Southern Lehigh. And she was the number one player, I believe, the last two years for them. I remember um, interviewing her for the tennis player of the year story. And I don't know if it's changed since then, but at the, that time she was you know, considering um, playing both sports, basketball and yeah. tennis at, at college. Um, I know basketball is what she felt was her number one sport. She just kind of picked tennis up as a, you know, stay in shape, yeah. do something like that. And, um, y you know, didn't work on that 12 months a year like a lot of the number one tennis players at some of these schools do, but was just a natural athlete and adapted and really excelled. well. And yeah, and excelled at it and was our player of the year. And uh, basketball handled the point guard. Uh, Pleasant Valley's had some really good teams over the last couple of oh, years, yeah. and she's been the you know kind of the glue to yeah. uh, to that team. Yeah, and again playing in the EPC, which is certainly not easy, but yeah. um, she certainly um, you know kind of makes the Bears go. Um, and speaking of going, um, Jake <laughs> Martinez, um, Palmerton, I mean, he was our boys cross country athlete of the year. Um, you know, ran well at the Colonial League meet, was district champion, made it out to states, and then he came back um, in the spring and and he medaled uh, at states. I mean, he was and he was so good throughout leagues and districts and into states and that race that he ran at states to medal in 1600 and coming up through the field and really running a smart race on a hot day to get that medal was, um, you know, I think it just showed kind of. The type of the type of runner that he is, he's a smart kid. Uh, obviously, he's very talented, but uh, 
but for him to be able to execute that was still, I think, one of the most impressive things for me that whole weekend. A lot like Tina Caparella and Marion, they both excelled in the uh, in the fall and in the spring yeah. in the run in their running events, and and that's that's hard to do. It's it's so much different running on an outdoor cross country course, a um, little over three miles, compared to running 800, 1600, 3200, you know, one mile, two mile. On, on a track in the in the spring so it's two different kind of so versatile things. yeah yeah um and again jake has another year so i know he'll be looking forward to coming back next year and doing even better in cross country and then coming back hopefully in the spring and, and doing even better again and getting another medal and, and maybe more than just one medal right. um and then you look at another colonial league athlete northwestern's caleb climber um was really good for the Northwestern football team okay. um, in, uh, you know, I mean, during the fall. I thought as, you were going to say wrestling as a linebacker. I was going to say really good. Yeah, I think you're kind but of. But <laughs> then he was even better. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously he excels um, in wrestling, and this year he put it all together. State and champ. was a state champion. Yeah. I mean, he was, we talked about Tina Caparell being kind of unstoppable and dominant. I mean, he was. He had some close matches, I mean, throughout the postseason and you know, even in other spots during the season, but it just never felt like yeah. he was gonna and, crack. And you talked I, about Jake Martinez being mentally strong oh. and mentally I mean, Caleb Climber oh. is yeah. you know, I mean the example of being mentally tough on the map because like you said, when you get to that level, no matter how good you are, you're gonna have some close oh, matches. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have to find a way to win matches. Especially at states and even yeah. if it's a two one, one nothing, right. three one. I mean it's going you're, into the third period oh, yeah. of these bouts and yeah and, you're a uh, move away from losing a match. Right. I mean, and maybe losing a state title or uh, even a medal. Yeah, you're losing the first or second round, and you, which has you happened to kids. I oh, mean, yeah. you go out there and you you get a little bit, uh, you know, kind of awe. You're in awe of it, and um, you just you just get a little bit um, kind of unnerved, and all of a sudden, you know, your whole tournament goes up in smoke. But, and we were uh, talking about how easy it is to forget about what Caleb did in football because you, you think of him and you think of wrestling, his wrestling, yeah. right? But uh, he was solid, solid defender for the North Linebacker, North yeah, I mean, this year. really, really good. Yeah. Um, and then again, speaking of football, look at Cody Shear. I mean, Lee Heighton's do all. I mean, you think about what he did at the quarterback position on offense, yep. and then what he did on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, the Heighton had a historic season this year, and it was very much in large part to, to what yeah, he meant. Yeah, everything ran through. Yeah, on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you think about them getting to a district title game. You think about an undefeated season and, you know, a Schuylkill Football League title, and then just all of that success and, and two of the the biggest games uh, we've had around here in in decades football wise the last game of the regular season oh. against jim thorpe when it was unbeaten against unbeaten Which and then crazy. the district championship game against palisades when it was unbeaten versus unbeaten so it was just and that uh, was a back and forth i mean shootout and, and and you talked about cody playing quarterback but uh he was a runner and a passer. You know, he wasn't. Oh, yeah. He wasn't, yeah. You know, so just the versatility from that position, much less what he did defensively and special teams for them um, at quarterback. He he did it all. He he ran for scores. He passed for scores. He had two hundred yard rushing games and oh, yeah. passing games. School records just yeah. out the window. I mean, they just they rewrote. They I mean, the entire team wrote rewrote the record book this year. And again, he was. Um, a huge catalyst. And then he wrestled. Um, yeah, made it to he, regionals. He, um, he got hurt at the end of football season. He did. Right? He missed the little So he bit missed the beginning the of the wrestling season. Right. Came on, um, only had a handful or so of yeah, matches like, before districts had a really a, a poor seed. Right, I mean, because he would, only had... What, yeah, five matches regular season. Or so what they like seeded him with was just you know maybe five six matches. So he goes in and he has to go against you know a three seed and four. I mean he's going up against kids that are obviously very talented. And he had to see them very early in the tournament, yeah. and he made it through and got out to regionals. And um, again, like you said, I think for having an injury kind of shortened plague season, however you want to phrase it. Um, he wrestled remarkably well, and then he came back and he did track this spring. Um, he's been he's been a baseball for player, the baseball team right, for the last um, couple of years. Yeah, as a catcher, um, I mean, he's been 
great on the diamond and then this year he went out and he did track and I, I'm, I'm assuming that's kind of a little help for football where he'll go to Kutztown right and he's playing yeah going to division two Kutztown for football I don't know this for a fact but I'm just thinking they maybe suggested you know just track to, might help him keep him shape sure. a little better do some running do some sprinting but yeah um, so he, he's actually a four sport athlete he didn't play all four sports this year but um, he's equally as good in baseball and track and um, wrestling and football. So he, he did a little bit of everything. Which is and, awesome. And he's not the only Lehigh athlete. They were the, uh, the second school that we had two athletes we thought were deserving of this. Um, Mara Phelan yeah. is, uh, is also in that category. Um, and, you know, I think you look at what she did as she was our field hockey player of the year. Um, you know, I think really kind of I probably covered more field hockey this year than I have in the past couple of years, but um, she was, I think, maybe just the focal point of, of Corinne McConville's team um, that you saw reach a district final, get to states again. Um, I think she was kind of like the main point person off of corners, um, you know, things like that. Um, she was she was huge. She made a position change this year. Yeah. Um, that was. And that was, I think, big for that team and just kind of helping them to take take another step, um, take another step forward this and, year and, I and think for her career. One common thing we, we've seen with all these athletes is uh, Coach McConville talked about her being unselfish, about you know making the yeah. players around her better. And that's kind of a common theme for all these athletes we're talking about. And they also, almost all of them played on really good teams. Yeah. You know, they all got their teams to playoffs and whether it's districts or states and, and the individual, um, the runners and wrestlers and some of them that competed in individual sports, you know, they made it, you know, very far in postseason. Oh, absolutely. As well. Yeah. I mean, you look at the team success and again, it, it, like you said, it all goes hand in hand. Um, and again, the, um, you know, the Heighton Field hockey team had a great season, you know, again, um, reaching, reaching the state playoffs. Um, and I know Mara plays club field hockey. Like, I think that's a big thing for like a lot of these kids. Right. You see that, like whether it's indoor stuff for track or, you know, anything like that, where you have that ball, dedication you know. and it's a year round thing and she'll be going to American which is a division one school to play field hockey in the fall so. and and that's something you know you're just talking about it is the year-round dedication which makes the fact that they're good in two and three sports these people were talking about even more impressive because there, there really isn't an off season no. not only do you are you playing year-round in the school year but then in the saw in the summer you're playing either AAU volleyball oh, yeah. or field hockey or soccer and you're doing things there so um, these kids are all doing things year-round um, Mara's other sport is a, is a little different she, yeah she uh, was the number one player on the Lehigh and tennis team but it was the boys tennis team she was the number one player on yeah Lehigh doesn't have a girls team so she was the number one player for the boys team and played remarkably well yeah, um, winning record yeah um, qualified for districts um, in signals and then Olivia friend uh, they played together in the doubles tournament as well so yeah um, a really really good season playing against all guys there's um, I don't know if there's any other girl, any other team that has girls playing boys tennis in the whole district except Lee Hayden. So like that's all she played is guys this year and the best guy is very good. Team. Yeah, yeah. And very good. So, um, I mean, I know there was the one player from Notre Dame, East Stroudsburg, who was a district semifinalist, you know, and, and you're and you're able to see these guys on a regular basis um, yeah. and the level of competition again is super high playing um, playing number one all season. Um, and then we also had to transition um, to another female athlete who was remarkable across the board, um, yeah. Northern Lehigh's Jillian Olawine, who pretty much shattered every scoring, as the scoring record at Northern Lehigh um, during the soccer season, yep. came back, um, was big for the basketball team, and then was a standout in track and field again. I mean, she's had such a remarkable career in all three of those sports. It's yeah, it's incredible. It's very impressive. She was a Times News All Star in basketball. Um, you know, like she was you our said, girls track and field athlete of the year last year. Right, the year before. Um, still had another States. great great season in track this year and uh and like you said and soccer might be her best of the which, three sports yeah 
I mean, and then you think that, I know this year she had some injuries that she kind of had to overcome, um, but she still medaled at districts um, and medaled at leagues. I know she didn't make it back out to states, but, um, you know, despite any injuries, she was still um, extremely season. competitive yeah. and did extremely, extremely well um, throughout the season. I, I so, believe a four-year starter in girls basketball, um, you know, she's been their, one of their top two players pretty much the last two, three years. Yeah. She's been been this one of the stars on the team. Um, so yeah, and um, and then far and away was uh, was their leader in soccer this year. So yeah, uh, another great multi-sport athlete. So that's our list of 12 athletes that we compiled. Um, yeah, if we missed anybody, feel free to write us. Um, yeah. You can email Pat <laughs> at pmatsinko at tnonline.com and let him know who we missed or if there's somebody else you think should have been considered in there. But uh, with any kind of list like this, it's always fun putting them together. and It's always fun getting other people's opinion on, you know, who we missed or, uh, or why you like the people we did put on. Or why you really don't like <laughs> <laughs> the people Pat put on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought it was fun. I mean, because it kind of makes you sort of take a look at everything that um, that we've had, you know, throughout the course of three seasons, four years, you know, and seeing yeah. kind of what what these kids have done, which is um, and just looking at this list, we had a number of Division One athletes oh, yeah. on this list, and a number of underclassmen who will be coming back and have a chance to be Division One athletes in the future. Yeah. So, and you think about Caleb Clymer too; he's going Division One for Lock Haven. Yeah, we didn't know? mention I mean, him, but he's, he's going to be wrestling Division One. So, who did we have? We had Caporell, Hoffman, Clymer, Phelan, Phelan, um, all going Division One. Yeah. So, so of those 12 people that you know we had mentioned in it there's a whole bunch more that, like i said that are on the class and will be coming back next year yeah so um obviously the future is bright and even you know again if it's not division one um certainly that doesn't right and yeah we <laughs> have a whole bunch of other seniors here in this group that are going to be playing sport i think actually everybody is going to be playing somewhere sport next yeah. year right division yeah. three division two level so yeah um, it's a great group of athletes we were just talking about and now to kind of shift gears, I guess, a little bit. Um, since we are into this sort of summer mode, uh, that means Little League is ramping up. Right, the the, uh, the, the road to Williamsport is, is it's a long beginning. One too. Yes, yeah. I mean, starting Friday night, the the uh, District 11 or District 18, 10 to 12 year old group, and that is the group that eventually feeds into Williamsport. And I believe it's what the second third week of August is when the Little League World Series is in Williamsport. They play so many. So you, you're talking seven weeks, six seven weeks, you know, of you know winning tournament oh, after tournament. Yeah. So you, you got your district, and then at the state level you have a regional, and then you go to the state tournament, and then you have a. A uh, group of states, I think we're in like the Northeast or the Atlantic region, oh, yeah. whatever it is. And then when you win that, so that that's four, at least four tournaments you have to go to um, till you finally end up in Williamsport. And that's, I mean, it's, that's asking a lot, you know, oh, yeah. just to... Yeah, and, and it's it's navigate. pretty much a dream for ninety nine point nine percent of the kids who play little league, but it's everybody's dream. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's that's like, why. Yeah, I that's mean, why. You pl I that's mean, why you're doing it for right. I know you do it for the fun, and you know you do it for a whole but, bunch of reasons. Hey, but every kid want to win, right? Every kid who's got that first pair of cleats in the glove and watches ESPN uh, on the weekend knows that you know this that's is, the goal. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, everybody. I think you still ultimately you do want to win. Um, right. Fun. It's it's. It's nice to you know go out and have fun, but you do want to right. And and I think the cool thing about where we live is a lot of these kids who are playing in the District 18 tournament here have been up to Williamsport to be able to watch See the that. Little Leaguers when they're you know the last ten years of their life have you know probably made a trip up there once. I know some little leagues actually take organized bus trips yeah. up there to games or whatever. And since we're an hour and a half away, I mean it's it's not it a bad ride. Resonates a little bit more maybe right. where you see this and it's kind of like it, it's not it doesn't seem like it's that far away because you know that Williamsport is again it's kind of not 
right next door, but hey, it's not, yeah, you know, you're not right. talking about. And we've been lucky the last few years, not lucky, but, but skillful, I guess, the, the teams in Pennsylvania. We've had uh, Pottsville a few years yeah. ago was up there. Um, there's another team just a couple of years ago um, from the, right around that area, Williamsport, I can't think offhand who it was now, but, but uh, Pennsylvania has been well represented up there the last couple of years. So that all begins this weekend. Um, we have four games on Friday night, um, including um, a couple of games where we have Times News area teams. We have uh, Tal Mensings playing Friday night against Valley West. We have a, a matchup between a couple of local teams. That's the game you'll be at tomorrow night. Uh, that's Franklin Township and Anthracite playing up in Lansford. And uh, Tamaqua is hosting Hazleton. That's another game involving one of our local teams. That's a double elimination tournament. Uh, it's going to go on for the next week and a half or so uh, to crown a, a District 18 champ. And uh, like I said, it all kicks off tomorrow night. Yeah, so um, so that'll be that'll be fun to cover, fun to follow um, over the next uh, couple of weeks, you know, and then see just see see how long it goes, you know, right. see um, you know see how far see how far any one of these teams can take it. And so. we'll also have te a team from Jim Thorpe in this tournament representing our area. And uh, I guess that would be it. And uh, Tri-County that has some of our reaches. Yeah, area. Of our, our area there. And plus, the, maybe. plus the four teams I just mentioned um, are all part of that. Uh, and that, But that's not the only Little League tournament going on. That's the 10 to 12 age group. Like I said, that's the one that feeds into Williamsport. But there's also an eight to 10 year old group which starts Saturday of this week. Um, they divide theirs up into a north-south field, and this year um, all of our local teams are in the south group, which they'll be playing their games in Jim Thorpe, where yeah. the 10 to 12 group, they have a home and a visitor and move the fields around. The 8 to 10 group, they'll play all their games at Jim Thorpe. And then there's also a 9 to 11 age group. That doesn't start till next week, and they'll be playing all their games at the Valley East field. So we'll be um, we'll be busy with right. with this in addition to our Legion coverage. Still have Pontiac. Northern Valley yeah. and Carbon Monarchs playing in. Uh, we have Valley Legion that's got about two three weeks to go in the regular season, and then we'll get into postseason play there. Be here before you know it. Yeah. Um, I think they're you, almost already halfway through. Um, you yeah. know, so we're we're kind of. We're almost in July, you know. So yeah. And like you uh, mentioned, Connie Mack, we have um, the Leah Valley Connie Mack League. We have, I think we have like four teams from our coverage area now. Jim Thorpe, Palmerton, Pleasant Valley, and Northern Valley. Northern Valley all have uh, have teams in that league. We, uh, Rod Heckman was at um, a game on uh, yeah, a good Tuesday game. night. Jim Thorpe yep. and Northern Valley. Two of our area teams playing. He covered a good game there. Uh, we'll be covering that throughout the next several weeks until they feed into their postseason and then and then we'll cover some of the postseason games as well so uh summer baseball will be on the agenda for the next month or so everything from the uh, eight-year-old little leaguers up to the 19-year-old legion players um also this week um the former cedar beach um, the, the basketball tournament used to be the stellar yeah. um, tournament. They've changed the name now, but down in Cedar Beach in Allentown. Um, just talking to Mike Haynes from our weekly paper before we came on to do this. And um, we have, I think we have four local teams. Panther Valley's in it, Lee Hyden's in it, a couple of other teams, Northwestern's in it, and maybe Northern Palmerton. Lehigh and Palmerton. Yeah, so we have some teams down there. We'll have a story in Monday's paper. Basically, that starts tonight, kind of recapping another double elimination tournament how our local teams did down there so pretty well spread out I think we have a pretty good uh, pretty good variety of things on tap uh, coming up over the next week two weeks three weeks so um, so still a lot to look forward to yeah um, anything else uh, no I think that's it I think we're good sounds good all right thank you again everybody for joining us for TN sports chat presented by Lehigh Valley Health Network for Emma McCall I'm Patrick Redding.